You might be wondering, hey Chiskul, how is it that you're in this situation yet again where your kingdom is rallying the 155 million power player, King Talib? And that, that is really a good question. In this video, we're going to showcase our rallying King Talib yet again, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of power loss. Well... Here we are again, <laughs> fighting with King Talib, rallying him in Zone 1 in our own kingdom. He's at 155 million power, and that is going to drop a lot. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and this kind of crazy, apparently we have on our channel all the time in this video we are rallying down king to leave and you're probably wondering whoa just cool this guy's in your own kingdom what in the world is going on here and that is the right question to ask let me tell you what's going on here a couple months ago king to decided that despite the kingdom rules despite the clear kingdom guidelines communicated many 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 times he was just going to win the mightiest governor despite our own very clear many times communicated rules. Have I emphasized that we communicate the rules many times? He knew what he was doing. He violated the rules, zeroed a lot of cities in the process of violating those rules, which is pretty not okay in our eyes. So we went and we took at least like 50 million or so power off of him the last time that he became rallyable. After that happened, he put on a 30-day peace shield. Well, he was out and about, I suppose, in his eyes, minding his own business, battling a barbarian keep, and a bunch of folks from our kingdom decided to teleport over and pay him a little visit. They battled his troops, and I guess he got frustrated because then he decided he was going to start swarming some of the cities of those players. Yes, really, he started swarming a player that was 72 million power. Whoa. So, what did we do in response? King Dalib starts to teleport around and move around the map, so we decide, after we've got a critical mass of players, to imprison him using the new king skill. He can no longer teleport. I teleport over, others to teleport over. In this clip, I'm the king. So I use the king skill to imprison him, and I use the king skill here to buff up myself. We do have other rallies that joined in. Uh, it did take a little bit of time to get those other rallies going, because there was no warning that we were going to do this. This just happened out of the blue that we were doing this so i was solo rallying king to leave of course with the smash squad at my back so you know i got good coverage here um and two other rallies go in on the action here starling leading one and chrismat leading the other new migrant to the kingdom great to have you here so this is completely insane we're triple rallying king to leave with no notice whatsoever we're using two attila takeda because like it's just what we had in the moment the gear was on we had to just like launch the rally right away like go 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 because he had War Frenzy, and that War Frenzy was going to fade off, and when it fades off, he can Peace Shield, so we had to act incredibly fast, and what you're about to see him do at the tail end of this fight is pop the good old-fashioned I Surrender Peace Shield. Here it comes any moment now. He's going to pop that shield, and this fight will be done. We are going to, however, inflict an outrageous amount of damage because his power at the end of this, yeah, He's down to 125 million power, and he might train some back, but he has lost a lot of troops in this very, very short encounter. I mean, this all took less than 10 minutes time, and we'll show you the reports. They are insane. Here you can see people going in for those resources, and King Talib does have a lot of resources. It's kind of astonishing. The swarm is super real as the final moments of this fight play out. Boom. There's that shield. Wow. All right, so let's get into these reports. And let me just say, like, this is not personal against King Talib. It's just a thing we need to do to defend the kingdom. For as long as he remains a threat to the kingdom and chooses to be here as a threat, then we need to make sure that we at least do whatever we can do to try to reduce his combat effectiveness and ability to harm members of the kingdom. It's pretty straightforward in that regard. Um, so... If he wanted to no longer be rogue, like, I don't know how we'd approach reintegrating him to the kingdom since this isn't the first time or the second time. It's really the third time that he's gone rogue. I, like, I don't, 
I don't know what, what the path is, but if it exists, I'm open to it. I just don't know what it is. For now, here is what we did. Getting a look at the report, he switched his captains multiple times. Here is the first part of the report, Attila Takeda battling into the Charles Martel E-Song. I think that's a very solid choice to take this multi-rally. In fact, that's... I mean, I would use infantry as a primary commander for sure, given that we were rallying with cavalry. We look at the troop buffs. We do have substantially more buffs from the Alliance technology that we have. It really is very, very meaningful, making a huge difference in this contest, in addition to all the Holy Site buffs that like we have and he does not for this combat. Now, of course, he's got his commander's expertise, although I don't know what equipment he's got on or what talents he's chosen. He then switches the commanders to, at one point, be Richard the First Primary with Esong, which, oh man, that, that was quite exciting for that brief moment in time. Things really started to heat up over here. Then, Continuing on, he tries out Constantine on the wall. Constantine, I think, is a mighty fine choice as well. Infantry commander is a very good pick. And for as long as we had the single rally, I actually think the Constantine Esong might have been a good choice. In fact, obviously, the Charles Martel with the Constantine secondary would have been a much better choice. Looking in on the next portion of the rally, that is, in fact, what he goes ahead and does here. Constantine with Charles Martel. I think that's a very smart choice. And the next portion of the rally... He puts in Julius Caesar, which I think is a super weird choice. I don't know what's going on at this point. Uh, and then he goes to Charles Martel with Julius Caesar before changing yet again to the Charles Martel Constantine. So far, it's going all right. Nothing too major report. I am solo rallying him up to this point. Then he switches back to the Charles Martel Esong and... Oh, we're not done yet. Here's the good stuff. This is the way that things really finish out and start to go sideways is this nearly five to one trade over here that really tips the whole thing massively in our favor. And this is just the one rally. Let me go get the other two rallies that were taking place so that you can get a peek at those. Okay, here's the report from Chris Mott. He had initially the 28,000 dead to the 45,000 dead. And then there's a commander swap, a few more. This is the big one over here, 80,000 for him and 254,000 for Talib. Um, so he's using a Guan Alex. We just look in on the troop buffs. It is a different alliance, uh, but you know, a top tier alliance in our kingdom uh, was used to launch the rallies. And you see the, the buffs really make a huge difference here. Um, now, Talib's infantry are looking really solid because, like, yeah, he's using two really sick infantry commanders, but, you know, he's got more than infantry in his city. Um, commanders that buff multiple troop types would obviously be much more preferable for this style of situation. All right, here is the Sterling rally report. Let's get a look in on this. Some initial damage is looking good. And then, oh my goodness gracious, that is insane. The old five for one over here is pretty freaking nuts. This rally you can see launched without the full amount of troops. He just had to get it out the door. And at the time that it connected, looks like he had almost six mil in the city, but it was so ineffective relative to the rally uh, for the reasons we've talked about already, the stats, the buffs, um, all that good stuff, the, the talents even. Yeah, I mean, well... <laughs> Someone from, someone from NL hits the rally. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsies. Anyways, pretty solid outcome over here. Getting some really good trades at the tail end of this. And, you know, all in all, King Talib lost 30 million power. He can probably heal from his hospital, like 4 million of it back, something like that. But this was a very sick set of rallies. And, you know, I, I just want to emphasize again, I don't know what the path forward is after... In three kingdoms, he's kind of gone rogue and done what he wanted to do. And, you know, in two of those kingdoms, I guess he left. And here, he seems to be sticking around. So for as long as he stays, it's going to be really interesting. That's worked in many ways as kind of a unifying force for our kingdom. Uh, and that has gone actually very much in our favor. I mean, like, yeah, we're losing troops, but like... Is it a good thing that the kingdom is getting better and better at responding within a five-minute window to do a triple rally? Yeah. Like, we're getting practice and honestly, like, all kind of unified around a single objective. 
it's given us something to do between KVKs that's certainly entertaining for a lot of people in the kingdom. Um, and, you know, look, like I've said many times, my preference is that King Talib finds a really awesome kingdom that he wants to go to and wants to participate in um, and be on their art team. Um, but he bowed out of our art team and then went rogue. So here we are. <laughs> this is the situation we find ourselves in. Um, and again, this is to emphasize. It's not, this is not personal. It's just 100% protecting the kingdom and enforcing the rules that we have made pretty clear kind of what they are. Um, all in all, a crazy morning. I mean, this, I was like, you know, honey, can you take the baby? I got an emergency. <laughs> I got an emergency. This qualifies as an emergency, right? This qualifies. We use the imprisoned king skill. And let's talk about that for a second. The imprisoned king skill is changing. So the way that it works today is that I can pick the city of someone who's not in my alliance and I can lock them down for 15 minutes. I can do that once every three hours, which is very solid. That is getting changed in the latest patch. This ability will only be a... 10 minute duration and we'll have a 15 hour cooldown so i think that is okay we obviously were able to do a lot more damage than i really kind of expected in the short window that we had and in a kvk context if you're really trying to lock someone down like you still could have multiple kingdoms hitting somebody for a 40 minute lockdown which is really extraordinarily savage I mean, if we could knock 30 million power off someone in 10 minutes or less, I mean, you saw that clip was like five minutes. The fighting started a little bit before I showed the clip, um, but I just wasn't able to record up until that point. So like, if you could do all of that in under 10 minutes, I mean, like, yeah, maybe 10 minutes is enough time here. Maybe 10 minutes is enough time and puts at least enough fear into someone who wants to be going 100% rogue that they really consider what those consequences will be if the kingdom decides that they're going to take action. Also, by the way, a couple other changes coming to the game, including changes to the taxes. And here's the leader skill that we were using. It was like 500 gems for the 3% damage boost. And I figured I better just pop this. I could have waited until the other rallies were there, but the rally we had was running for a couple minutes before that point. So I don't know. I feel okay about when I timed that overall. If you want to watch the video where we rallied to leave previously, I actually wasn't there for it, but I got a recording uh, from an Alliance member uh, card up in the top, so you can go check that out. It's completely insane. If you're looking for commander guides, specifically to go invest in perhaps a garrison commander that's good for defending your city, I've got a playlist for city defense. I'll put the card up in the top. For that as well, I can highly recommend that you go check out that video. Consider throwing a comment on the video to share what you thought of this craziness and liking the video if this was entertaining. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I mean, don't you want to see what happens next? <laughs> Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.